Hey, this is Steve, V6WZ. Let's talk about end fire versus broadside phasing in RX antennas. What's the difference and how do these things work? I'm going to talk about some super high directivity RDF uh, antennas that combine both end fire and broadside phasing. Mostly talk about beverages, but also uh, some vertical arrays as well. Let's do some modeling in Foranek 2 to explain the difference between end fire and broadside arrays. Uh, in this case, all my models are on 160 meters. Uh, more correctly, I should be talking about my dimensions, especially spacing in the context of wavelengths. But in this case, I uh, describe specific uh, dimensions, but they're all based on 160 meters. Let's take two verticals. We're going to space them in this case 60 feet or 18 meters apart. But the fact is we can uh, have almost any spacing. And by selecting a uh, phase relationship between the two verticals, specifically the lagging vertical, the one behind, is delayed a certain amount. And that uh, phase delay is, is a, it has a relationship to do with the, uh, the spacing between the verticals. I won't talk about the specifics, but certainly your modeling program can help you optimize that uh, phase relationship. When we do this, we end up with a cardioid pattern. The array has forward gain in one direction and um, uh, a rejection in the rear. To the left is the uh, azimuth plot and the right the zenith plot. We call this an end fire array because the main forward lobe is coming off the end of the two verticals. It's an end fire uh, array. If we take those same two verticals, but now we're going to space them about 300 feet apart, again on 160 meters, I don't know, close to a half wavelength. If we phase the two verticals now, though, in phase, that is to say there's no phase delay between the two, or in other words, we have an equal length uh, feed line going to both antennas, we end up with this figure eight uh, pattern, a bidirectional pattern, uh, both in the azimuth plot and in the uh, zenith plot. This is what we call a broadside array. It's a broadside array because the maximum gain is broadside to the two verticals. Pretty simple. Okay, what if instead of verticals, we use beverages for the elements? So what we'll do is uh, we'll place on two equal length uh, beverage wires uh, beginning at the same spot as each vertical. In other words, they're still offset by 60 feet. We call this, though, instead of spacing, let's call it the stagger. Uh, the spacing between the wires can actually still be very close, like up to, uh, you know, down to 15 feet apart. And there really is uh, not much degradation uh, between the array. So the benefit of this, though, of course, is we take a single beverage wire, which already has a forward uh, pattern and uh, its own RDF, and we're going to enhance that uh, by uh, putting them what we call on echelon or end fire. We call them on echelon with the, uh, with the stagger. So now what we've done is we've enhanced what was a 13, 12 uh, dB RDF antenna uh, to a 13 dB RDF uh, array with these two antennas uh, staggered on echelon. The real benefit, though, is not as much the RDF as this greatly enhanced rearward uh, rejection, uh, really enhanced front to back or front to rear. Really helpful antenna if you're looking at uh, maximizing your rearward rejection from QRM or other types of noise. So how do we build these things? All right, so in the field, what we'll do is install the two beverages side by side. Uh, as I explained, I mean, they could be as close as 15 feet. Uh, you know, if you're in the forest, it's a matter of finding a convenient place where the two wires can be, you know, maybe on a set of trees that are only offset maybe 15 to 20 feet apart. Uh, the main thing is to try and keep them as consistently uh, spaced as possible. But ultimately, they will be uh, offset by what we call the stagger, the distance, S, which is equivalent to, in a vertical array, that same spacing of the uh, vertical, of the verticals. They'll both be fed. Um, uh, into what's called a, a zero degree hybrid combiner, a magic T. However, and this is very important, uh, there will be what we call a delay line included on the lagging vertical. This is the uh, vertical which is uh, uh, behind the, uh, the, in the direction of, uh, uh, of reception. The delay line will be equal to S. It's equal to the stagger distance in electrical degrees. In electrical length, it's uh, equal to uh, S or slightly less. If you do the modeling, you'll see that uh, 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 making the delay a little bit less than the, the absolute stagger improves the, uh, the rearward rejection. So in other words, this lagging or uh, rearward uh, uh, beverage uh, has a feed line that's equal to L plus S, L being the one feed line length. 
This system is called, uh, was actually, I think, in, in mostly enhanced and promoted by Tom, W8JI. He calls it the crossfire phasing method. And it's, it's really uh, uh, brilliant in that it, uh, it is uh, frequency independent. In other words, it'll cover uh, multiple octaves of frequency and still maintain the uh, proper phase relationship. Well, okay, what if instead of verticals we use beverages in, uh, in a broadside phasing system? In this case, we have two uh, equal length uh, beverages that replace uh, the verticals. Right away, I, I th hopefully you can see what the benefit of this might be. Each beverage, is, of course, has a forward uh, gain and a pattern in this direction. But with the broadside phasing, what we're going to do is enhance the side rejection, uh, diminish the, uh, the, the, the nulls off the, uh, off the side. So in fact, by the way, uh, my, this, this modeling, it, rather than being uh, you know, east-west as it were, it's kind of pointing to the south. It's just because of the way I built my modeling. Anyway, we take a single beverage, okay, uh, which has an RDF of about 11.7. This is different than the other modeling. It's a function of the ground that I use, but it's the, really the relative uh, RDF that we're uh, interested in. And if we put two of those uh, wires and we space them 200 feet apart, and of course, feed them in phase, that is to say zero degrees at both. In other words, equal length phase line, uh, equal length uh, feed lines to a combiner, a zero degree hybrid combiner or a magic T, we end up with uh, an RDF of 13.1, slightly improved over the uh, single vertical, which is shown in blue. We do increase the gain by 3 dB because we now have two verticals. If we space it, though, out to 400 feet, you'll see that we've greatly narrowed uh, the beam width, and the RDF has greatly improved to 14.1 dB. And if we space them 500 feet apart, uh, the RDF has even improved more to 15 dB. And it's pretty clear to see with these all overlaid, that's because the beam width is narrowing. And again, that's because of the broadside uh, phasing, the, the nulling that we get from the uh, broadside uh, phasing system. Okay, well, how do we build these in the field? Well, gosh, these are really simple antennas to, uh, to build. Uh, they do, however, take up a lot of real estate. I mean, uh, the optimum, as you just saw, opt for my optimum RDF, you know, we want to be out to 400 feet spacing, uh, you know, close to three quarters of a wavelength uh, spacing between the wires. So, you know, this takes up a lot of real estate. However, really pretty simple in the field. You just build the two wires uh, pointing in the same direction and parallel with the spacing that you desire. Two equal length feed lines go to a box with a zero degree combiner or a magic T and, and off we go to the radio. Pretty simple to build. What if we combine end fire and broadside beverages? Take a broadside uh, array like we just discussed and combine it with an end fire uh, array like we just discussed. Well, what we'll do is we'll just build two uh, on echelon uh, end fire uh, 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 arrays and space the two of them 400 feet apart. <laughs> Pretty simple idea. You're basically going to maximize the and benefit from the really enhanced rearward rejection from an on echelon pair and benefit from the uh, side rejection of a broadside pair. You end up with a pattern like this, and it's pretty spectacular for a 400 uh, foot spaced pair. You know, the RDF is uh, still, uh, you know, over 15 dB, but look at the uh, beautiful pattern here with uh, the, the massive nulls uh, from the rear. Pretty, pretty uh, special antenna. A uh, little bit challenging to build, though. There's no question. A lot of wires in the field. Okay, here's one for you. Let's go back to using verticals. In this case, let's take the YCC9 circle array, which really at any one time is three phased verticals, uh, developed, as I say, by the YCC uh, club and uh, John W1 Fox Victor developed the, uh, the array based on this three elements and having identified the optimum spacing. I'm not going to go into it. I do have other uh, videos on the nine circle array, but basically three uh, elements which have uh, optimized phase in N5 to uh, build a really uh, a solid pattern with an RDF of uh, 12 uh, dB, and it kind of looks like this. Okay, well, what if we take uh, two of those arrays, all right, two three-element arrays, and uh, broadside them, you know, space them anywhere from two to 500 feet apart? Well, what do we get? Well, uh, here's 200-foot spacing. We enhance the RDF. It, it goes up to uh, 13.2. 
If we space them 300 feet apart, we get 14.1 uh, dB of RDF. And if we space them 400 feet apart, we're 15 dB. And uh, up to 15, uh, 500 feet apart, the RDF is shot up to uh, a spectacular 15.4 uh, dB. Pretty, pretty hot antenna. Okay, what about practical realities, though? Or in other words, hey, look, this looks good on paper. Uh, specifically talking about uh, th this, uh, you know, the three-element pair. Well, okay, for a 400-foot spaced pair, you know, we're going to need over 1,000 feet of RG6. You know, I mean, we've got, you know, 400-foot spacing between the two. Then each uh, array, each three-element array has, you know, 70-foot uh, delay lines or feed lines to each each element, um, you know, and then, then also delay lines associated with that too you know we have two complex combiner boxes we got control t cables for direction switching six high impedance amplifiers and chokes and you know we also have to uh, you know build each vertical element and install it uh, and this is you know for all two directions and you know and we only end up with two directions in this case so uh, and it's got a pretty narrow beam width so you know a lot of uh, effort a lot of installation uh, pain for really only two directions though you can skew it a little bit by changing the, the broadside phase I won't get into that. With respect to an on echelon phase beverage pair, like I talked about earlier, it's a little bit more doable. There are those that have built them. They are out there, you know, but we still need to, you know, if you're in the bush, you know, you got to bushwhack your way into installing four beverage wires. You still need the feed boxes, the termination and uh, associated ground rods. And this is all just for one direction. But, you know, as we showed, it's got pretty excellent front to back, front to rear, and uh, is a bit more forgiving uh, with the forward beam width, depending on the spacing. Okay, just a few closing comments here. You know, throughout this this uh, video, I've talked a lot about RDF, received directivity factor. You know, and I want to say that it really does work. Some of you may have seen, I've made a few other videos about uh, talking about RDF and also explaining and showing examples of the difference between RDF uh, and on antennas and how it uh, can make a difference. Uh, what I'm saying here is it's not just on paper where you have uh, a, a different number and, you know, it may or may not improve copy. I've actually uh, done A, B comparison and those antennas with a higher RDF actually do uh, hear uh, better. I've uh, built most of these antennas, uh, well, broadside arrays as well as on echelons, quite a few on echelon arrays as well. Um, uh, currently, I'm really only using broadside arrays. I've got uh, six different directions covered with broadside pairs. Uh, they, I have found, actually do hear better. Uh, than the on echelon uh, type uh, phased arrays. However, um, I would say that on echelon uh, arrays uh, really are exceptional antennas if you suffer from rearward uh, QRM. For example, if you're on the West Coast listening to and trying to work Japan and you have a lot of QRM from the East Coast, uh, North America, they can be, uh, you know, really powerful antennas. Uh, you know, uh, if you, another thing you can do, of course, is feed uh, individual feed lines back to the shack and use a phase box, such as the NCC1, uh, to do some null steering or pattern uh, changing. Um, you know, with a broadside pair, you can do that, but, you know, more, more specifically to an on echelon pair. If you do that, you might want to uh, increase the spacing on an on echelon pair to um, enhance the ability to do uh, null steering. Check out Tom, WHJI's page. You know, uh, what a great resource that page of his is. And he talks a lot about and explains how Crossfire feed system works. He also talks a lot about broadside uh, beverage fa uh, phased pairs and how, uh, how effective they are. And, of course, there's John, ON4UN, Silent Keys, a low band DXing book. Truly the Bible. And all of this is discussed in detail uh, in the uh, low band DXing book. 73, Steve, V6WZ.